Ron Paul arrived on a bright fall morning saying he was rested and ready. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi. How you doing? Everybody gets up early. Huh? <laughs> get, get busy and work hard. <laughs> Probably not as early as you, though. <laughs> well, you know what? Today was great. I, I had the choice of coming in real early this morning. I came in late last night and had a good night's sleep, but I needed it. Those who know him call him Dr. Paul. He spent decades in the medical field delivering more than 4,000 babies in Texas before getting active in politics. So what's been the most challenging issue for you and your family since you've been trying to run for president? You know, they say a lot of bad things about you, some good things about you and your family. Yeah, that is. I think the schedule is, is very challenging, and I'm such a complainer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> I mean, not too many uh, weeks ago, we had a rally up here. Matter of fact, the park over there, we had 800 people, volunteers come. And the family, it was a family event, and I think we had 30 members of our family. We have five children and 18 grandchildren and spouses and all. So I was very amazed how many showed up because I didn't organize it. My middle son, who's an ophthalmologist in Kentucky, he organized it. He says, get the family up there. And usually the other night when we were... Uh, in Florida for the debate, uh, two of my grandchildren were there with uh, with me, and my wife will go on about half of the half of the trips. But uh, I, it's it's not easy because I really like to go home. <laughs> <laughs> on a personal note, uh, just looking at grad schools right now, I'm sort of in different areas of the country, and uh, one of them is Texas. And I was wondering if you can give me any insight into like the the type of person you know a Texan is and what the kind of environment I could expect would be. <laughs> Well, do you have your boots on yet? <laughs> <laughs> I think Texas, I, I, I think some of that image stuff is a, a, bit, a bit concocted at times. I think Texas is like every place else, <laughs> you know. And to, to me, I think they have a spirit of independence and liberty. And yet, if you go to our state house in, in Texas, we have some of the same problems that many other states uh, face up to. So uh, it's, there's, there's a lot to be said that human nature is human nature. So what was your defining moment that made you say, I think I should be the president of the United States? Well, for me, it's a little bit different because I approached it differently because I uh, never had that. I say, oh, you know, this is what I want to do. Because it, in many ways, most people want to be president because they are, uh, they, they believe the president's job is to run your life, run the economy, and run the world. And mine is so different. Uh, mine is abs actually opposite. Uh, I don't want to run your life. Uh, I, I want your life to be your own, and you assume responsibility for it. Ron Paul is the only major Republican candidate who opposes the war in Iraq. He promises to bring U.S. troops home immediately. I'd like to know where you get the courage to stand and speak your views that are very different from your party. I think it comes from uh, having studied a long time and, and, and always worked to try to come up with the right conclusion, then I could defend those positions. So I guess it comes from a lot of things, you know, whether it's independence, or you, and you have to have confidence uh, to, you know, to be a doctor. You know, you have to know what, how to take care of an emergency, and even though fortunately in delivering babies, uh, most of the work is done by the mother. <laughs> Paul says medical school was a formulative time for him. The abortion debate was in its early days, and that had an impact. And so did a care package from home. In 1957 was an interesting year because uh, I think that year it was my mother sent me a book. She was well read, although not college educated. She sent me the book that came out that year was Dr. Chivago. And uh, I read that, and that really had a bit of an impact to me, knowing what, you know, communism did and how destructive it was. And cool. my wife worked my way through college, <laughs> medical school <laughs> because she was, a, she was a dance teacher, and she could watch our kids and teach dancing in our home. The Cuban Missile Crisis interrupted medical school. Ron Paul was drafted. He served in the Air National Guard for five years. So you said you were a flight surgeon in the, in the Air Force? Right. I was a fly medic. So what oh, was, is that right? So what were some of your like, best assignments? Best what? <laughs> assignments. Well, I know. My immediate answer, I can remember the worst ones. <laughs> the worst assignment was when you were the uh, investigator of accidents. You know, the flight surgeon. Right, right. You know, a, cra a plane goes down. I had about three of those. And they're, of course, terrible when you try to figure out 
who messed up. Was it right. a mechanic or a pilot error or what? Ron Paul also remembers meeting President Kennedy in Texas on November 21st, 1963, the day before the world changed. And, of course, we thought it was an exciting uh, uh, event, not realizing what was in store for us within, within 24 hours because he left there and, went, and, and went, went to Dallas. Over time, Ron Paul's interest in politics turned to activism. He ran for Congress in 1976 and won. That I only have a picture of one politician in my, watch, in my office is Grover Cleveland. And the quote under the picture is, what is it worth winning an election or getting reelected if you don't stand for something. What, what's your take on religion as part of the, the process for the campaign process? I think, it, I think it's very important, um, but in a uh, nondescript manner. But over time, Paul grew tired of Washington and for a brief period stepped out of the spotlight. I was in Congress from 76 to 84. And then I wanted to go back to my medical practice. I do OBGYN, delivered a lot of babies, and I missed it and really didn't want to be a professional <laughs> at this game of politics. So I went back to OBGYN. Frustration with decisions in Washington drew him back. He ran for president in 1988 as a libertarian and later returned to Congress. So what do you think is more difficult, politics or Delivering babies. <laughs> well, I guess with risk, I say delivering babies was a lot more fun. <laughs> At least you ended up with something new and precious. <laughs> and uh, it was exciting, even though this was old-fashioned. Back in the old days, when we delivered, there weren't so much the, the husbands and the family participating. Now it's a big family event. <laughs> but it was, it, it, like I say, this was old-fashioned, but it was sort of exciting. You deliver the baby, and there were no ultrasounds, and nobody knew. And you'd walk out and talk to the husband, and you'd say, "You have a eight-pound boy." <laughs> so, How many grandkids do you have? We have eighteen grandchildren and one one great grandchild. And one great grandchild. Right. Can you name them all? <laughs> you know, I, I might have to stop and think. Yes, I, I can and do that. Um, but I always brag when I'm introducing my wife. I said. Yeah, I can. We have 18, 18 grandchildren, and I can name them all. I said, but my wife knows all their birthdays, <laughs> so uh, I, I'd have trouble with all their birthdays. <laughs> we went to high school together. Wow. And um, our first date was, uh, you know, she, she was she was born on, uh, and this is why I married her. I have to confess, she was born on February twenty ninth. I figure yeah. every four years. Yeah. Yeah, no she said, no way, buddy. <laughs> So uh, she uh, she had a birthday party on uh, on her 16th birthday, and for some reason she was determined to get me to that birthday party. And uh, I, I believe it or not, I was very shy. <laughs> so she asked me, and it might have been really one of my first dates too. If you had one free day where you couldn't campaign and you couldn't deliver any babies, what would you do with the free day? <laughs> that would be a, that'd be tough. You know what I would like to do? Um, I love riding bicycles. I love to be outdoors. And that is always my biggest complaint that uh, when I'm real busy on the campaign trail because I had a bit of a ritual walking and riding bikes a lot. You come I, across a genie in your bottle, what are your three wishes? <laughs> a lot more peace in the world. A lot more freedom in, in the world, and then we would have a lot more prosperity.